Now, keep in mind, not all the drugs we have, we use, are against bacteria and bacteria only. Because we're not infected with just bacteria. We can also get fungal infections. We can also get parasite infections. We also get viral infections. So, the antibiotics, the penicillins, and things like that that we would use for bacteria are not going to work if it's fungal, if it's parasitic, if it's viral. So we would develop drugs just for them. Now, if you go and you look at table 10.7 here, you'll see a list of the drugs we used for different fungal infections. Again, we split them by drug group. We split them up by within the drug groups by what class or what was the origin? What's their method of, you know, their mode of action? One of the big ones, amphotericin B. Amphotericin B is a nice uh, drug that binds the fungi membranes. Interferes with permeability. Interferes with permeability so that things cannot pass through the membrane readily. Here's the wrinkle. Amphotericin B is topical only. Topical only. So if you have a fungal skin infection, whether it's hands, you know, it's athlete's foot, crotch rot, whatever. This will be, amphotericin B will be a cream you put on the surface. The cream will slowly diffuse through the epidermis to the outer layers of the dermis. And that's as far as it will go. Because look at its mode of action. Binds to and inhibits membrane function. You don't want to orally take this one because once it gets into your system and goes everywhere, then it's going to start interfering with different membranes, you know, the cytoplasmic membranes of different cells. You can't have cardiac cells being interfered with because then your heart's going to be, you know, arrhythmically. Can't have it affecting the depolarization of neurons or you're not going to have any neural impulses. Cutoconazole interferes with sterile synthesis. You hand me two cells. You hand me, I'm oh, sorry, two test tubes, different cells in them. I can tell you whether it's an animal cell or if it's a fungal cell just by testing the components of the cytoplasmic membrane. Turns out fungi have certain sterols, different types of cholesterol, their version of cholesterol sterols in their membranes to maintain fluidity that's not going to be found in human animal cells. Interfere with their sterols, interferes with the synthesis of sterols, lack of sterols, replenishment of the sterols, means the membrane fluidity will decrease. Again, affects membrane function. Um, fluconazole. This is one that you're going to see is going to be used, as it says in the table, aspergillosis, cryptococcus, meningitis. These are going to be fungal infections that are no longer topical. These are going to be deep tissue fungal infections. Lungs. Cryptococcus is going to get in the brain. Fluconazole is going to, have to be highly toxic. But these AIDS patients who are lacking, pretty much lacking an immune system, you know, which is the only way you can get a fungi growing in and on your brain, Toxicity level of therapeutic index is going to be quite low, but again, you got a patient that's going to be dead from the fungal infection a day or so, so high toxicity, liver damage, things like that, something that you can treat at a later time point, you need to get rid of the infection. Toxicity be damned. You go and you look, you know, some of them, um, mycofungin is going to be great for candidata strains, candidata albicans. Candidata albicans, basically what we think of as fungal infection, yeast infection. So, topical, cream, suppository, depending upon whether or not you're talking a fungal infection, you know, for males versus females, is that, you know, 
on the testes, on the penis, down in that area, in the folds in between the groin, or is it, you know, up in the vagina, up in the folds of the labia, cream suppository, you understand that. So, you also see um, protozoan infections that need to be treated. Again here, therapeutic index is going to be quite low because a lot of the drugs are going to have highly toxic effects. Again, toxicity, possible liver damage, possible kidney damage, possible neural damage for some, is outweighed by the assured damage the protozoan infection is going to cause. Anti-malarial drugs, quinine and its relatives, things the derivative of the quinine, great for treating malaria. Um, certain places they take the quinine or the new drugs, and I can't think of the name of them nowadays, that's a derivative of, that's supposed to be like this, they'll take it prophylactically. I don't have malaria now, I haven't had it in the, in the past, but I'm going to take this drug once a day to keep me from getting malaria. Or I already have it, I'm going to take this drug that's going to halt the stage that the malaria is at, and going to allow my immune system to catch up and remove the infected red blood cells, remove the infected hepatic cells. Um, side note, I love this story, and I'm going to stretch out this lecture so I can tell this story. Um, what is it? Urban legend says that the Brits in India were having a big problem with malaria and quinine is quite ugh, tasting. So they knew quinine would help with it, but giving somebody a pill, powder, ugh, tasted bad. And the soldiers, yeah, yeah, they take the pill, yeah, yeah, I'll take it, whatever, and they wouldn't do it because it tasted bad. They didn't want that flavor in their mouth. So what they did is they took the quinine, they mixed it into uh, a solution solution of hard water with lots of minerals and things in it that they called tonic water. Tonic at this time, back in the 1800s, a tonic was something you would drink to alleviate, to help with an ailment. So you would take drink the tonic water. Still had a slight quinine flavoring in it, but because of the other minerals and things like that, you know, it minimized the direct quinine taste. Um, it's part of the regulations, British military, Army, Navy, whatever, that they got a daily ration of booze. You know, the Navy got rum or brand, you know, the officers got brandy. In India, with all the nice little florals they have here, all the spices and things like that, gin. So supposedly, the British Army, instead of giving out, you know, whiskey or things like the rum or something like that, gave out gin. Here's your shot of gin. Also, here's your tumbler full of the tonic water, which you need to take every day, drink every day, because as the quinine is going to keep you from getting sick. Well, like any good, you know, military man would do. Gin, tonic, gin and tonic. So, don't know if it's true or not, urban legend, but I do love that story because it does sound cool. Now, keeping in mind, when you're treating helminths, as you see here, it's going to be difficult. The helminth infections, yes, the tapeworm, can be all through your large intestine, can be through the large intestine up into the small intestine. You know, because remember, these things can be 2, 3, 5, 10 meters in length. Or it could be the flukes that have swam up the bile duct and are now lodged in different lobes of the liver. You can directly, here's some drugs that's going to kill them, but you're going to have this dead decaying fluke in the liver, and that dead decaying fluke in the liver is going to cause tissue damage. So size, the location of the helminths will cause a problem. Just to what level? And then again, they're animal cells. So 
when you're trying to treat them, anything you use that's going to affect the helminth is going to affect the patient. A lot of the drugs they use are going to be things that are going to immobilize. They're going to affect the motility. Yeah, that tapeworm that's all through your small intestine, large intestine, it's constantly wiggling, constantly shifting around. It stays attached, but the rest of it is moving. So you'll take a drug that's going to stop its ability to move. Over time, stop its ability to move. Peristalsis may dislodge it. Next thing you know, you're pooping out a four-meter length tapeworm. How's that going to affect us? Well, ciliary, cilia movement in the lungs is going to be affected. Sperm are going to be affected. Peristalsis may be affected. Different things like that. 